بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم بیک ٹو مائی چینل ان دس ویڈیو آئی ڈسکس دی ایکٹیو ٹرانسپورٹ میکنیزمس اکراس دی سیل میمبرین ان دا پریویس ویڈیو آن پیسو ٹرانسپورٹ میکنیزمس ٹو جنرل میتھڈس آف میمبرین ٹرانسپورٹ ور لسٹڈ وچ ور کیٹیگرائز بیسڈ آن ویدر اور ناٹ انرجی از ریکوائرڈ وی ڈیفائن دی پیسو ٹرانسپورٹ as the movement of substances across the membrane from area of higher concentration to lower concentration without the expenditure of cellular energy. If you want to view the video on passive transport, check the link in the description. We define active transport as the movement of substances across the membrane from area of lower concentration to higher concentration using energy from adenosine triphosphate. In this video, I shall be focusing on the active transport and its types. Some molecules need to move against their concentration gradients for transportation in or out of the cells. Such solutes may be able to cross the membrane by a process called active transport. Active transport is considered an active process because energy is required for carrier proteins to move solutes across the membrane against a concentration gradient. Like carrier mediated facilitated diffusion, active transport processes exhibit a transport maximum and saturation. Solutes actively transported across the plasma membrane include several ions such as sodium, potassium, hydrogen, calcium, iodide and chloride and amino acids and monosaccharides. Active transport processes are distinguished according to their source of energy. In primary active transport, the energy to do work comes directly from hydrolysis of ATP by carrier proteins called pumps. In secondary active transport, transport is driven indirectly by energy stored in concentration gradients of ions created by primary active transport pumps. One of the most important example of primary active transport is sodium potassium pump also known as sodium potassium ATPase which maintains the correct concentrations of sodium and potassium in living cells. Powered by ATP, the pump moves sodium and potassium ions in opposite directions, each against its concentration gradient. In a single cycle of the pump, three sodium ions are extruded from and two potassium ions are imported into the cell. The sodium potassium pump exists in two forms depending upon its orientation to the interior or exterior of the cell and its affinity for either sodium or potassium ions. The process consists of following steps. Step 1. Three sodium ions in the cytosol bind to the pump protein. Step number 2. Binding of sodium triggers the hydrolysis of ATP into ADP, a reaction that also attaches a phosphate group to the pump protein. This chemical reaction changes the shape of the pump protein, expelling the three sodium ions into the extracellular fluid. Now the shape of the pump protein favors binding of two potassium ions in the 
extracellular fluid to the pump protein. Step number three, the binding of potassium triggers release of the phosphate group from the pump protein. This reaction again causes the shape of the pump protein to change. Step four, as the pump protein reversed reverts to its original shape, it releases potassium ions into the cytosol. At this point, the pump is again ready to bind three sodium ions and the cycle repeats. The first and most crucial function of sodium potassium pump is to maintain normal cell volume. It does so by keeping a low concentration of sodium inside the cell. Since sodium is an osmotically active agent, excess sodium in cytosol would create hypertonicity which attracts extra water inside cell and leads to swelling and even bursting of the cell. Secondly, the pump provides the excitable cells the ability to generate electrical signals. It creates an imbalance of charges where there is a slight excess of positive charges on the outside of the membrane and slight excess of negative charges on the inside of the membrane. This slight imbalance of charges sets the stage for generation of action potential in neuron and muscle cells. Hence, sodium potassium pump is also known as the electrogenic pump. Thirdly, as sodium ion concentrations build outside the plasma membrane because of the action of the sodium potassium pump, an electrochemical gradient is created. This gradient tries to pull the sodium ions across the membrane through a transport protein. This movement is used by other substances that can attach themselves to the same transport protein. Glucose as well as many amino acids enter a cell by this means. When primary active transport provides energy for the uphill transport of another substance, it is called secondary active transport. Commonly, the energy stored in a sodium ion concentration gradient is used to transport other substances across the membrane against their concentration gradients. Because a sodium gradient is established by primary active transport, secondary active transport indirectly uses energy obtained from the hydrolysis of ATP. In secondary active transport, a carrier protein simultaneously binds to sodium ion and another substance and then changes its shape so that both substances cross the membrane at the same time. The carrier proteins used in the secondary active transport are also known as the transporters and are of two types. A symporter carries two different ion or molecules both in the same direction. An antiporter also carries two different ions or molecules but in opposite direction. It is pertinent to mention here that similar type of carrier proteins are involved in facilitated diffusion but those do not require ATP. The best example of secondary active transport 
is the co-transport of sodium and glucose in intestine. Dietary glucose is absorbed into cells that line the small intestine by sodium glucose symporter. Sodium ions are moving down their concentration gradient while the glucose moves uphill against its concentration gradient. Keep in mind that this symporter can do its job because the sodium potassium pump maintains a low concentration of sodium in the cytosol. Ion gradients can also drive antiport systems such as the sodium hydrogen ion antiporter that helps to regulate intracellular pH by using the sodium gradient to expel hydrogen ions out of the cell. Thanks for watching and listening. Please do share this video with your friends and colleagues. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and watch more videos.